As I prepared for this weekend, this homily, one word kept jumping out at me. As I prayed and read, that word just wouldn't go away. That word is truth. What is truth? It's the question that Pilate asked Jesus whenever Jesus tells him that he came to testify to the truth. What is truth? This is the question that ultimately the Pharisee is asking in today's gospel when he questions Jesus about the greatest commandment. He wants to know what is true. What is truth? This is the question that we all have in our hearts. We're all created to know the truth. We long for it. We desire it. We want to know it and we're unsatisfied with anything less than the truth. And truth is intimately connected to the response of Jesus in the gospel. Truth is intimately connected to love. And the two must remain together. You can't have love without truth. You can't have truth without love. So what is the role of the church in this search for truth? The church is the guardian, the protector of the truth. Despite what many people say today, there is objective truth. Things that aren't just true for you or true for me, the things that are true in and of themselves, they're always everywhere true. And the definition of truth, if you Google it, I know this because I did that, says this, right, explicitly. I was actually kind of surprised. Something that is true is something that is in accordance with fact or reality. The church safeguards the truth, which she, in a privileged way, has access to. And she has privileged access to it because we call the church the bride of Christ. Right? And Christ says that he is the way and the truth and the life. And so the church has been given this great gift of the truth. And so her role in it is to preserve the truth, to protect the truth, and to pass it on. What's our role in the truth? Our role is to first receive it, right, ultimately from the church, and then to hand it on to others. The truth has to be front and center when we talk about love. Right, St. Augustine says that We ought to love a person either because they are righteous or so that he might be righteous. We love someone either because they live in accordance with the truth or so that they might live in accordance with the truth. Love always has to lead others to the truth. This is a concept that's almost completely forgotten today. Many people think that love is simply to support someone in whatever they want to do. Whatever you do, I'm going to support you. Now, to a certain degree that's true, but not completely. And this idea is doing a lot of damage to people. It's doing a lot of damage to the church. It's doing a lot of damage to society. Because if you're going to do something that's harmful, if you're going to do something that's not good, if you're going to do something that's not in accord with reality, then I can't support you in that, right? We shouldn't support people in those things. If you're going to do something that's bad for you, it would not be good for me to support you, to say, I'm going to uh, help you to do this. Right? Yet so many people, and even good meaning, good uh, intentioned Catholics, do this. Oh, you want to be um, in this relationship that's not good for you? I support you. No. We have a duty out of love to inform them that it's not good. And this applies in so many other areas. And I think the reason why we fall to this at times is that we get stuck at the emotional level. Right? We think that love is all about emotion. And we fail to stand up for the truth. And when we fail to stand up for the truth, we fail to love. Thomas Aquinas gave a very good uh, classical definition of love, and he says that to love is to will the good of the other. And so we're not loving 
if we're not instructing, if we're not helping the one that we claim to love, to choose the good, to choose to do what is right, to choose to do what is in accordance with reality. Right? This can't be overstated. If we're not trying to lead people to the truth, then we're not really fully loving them. As I was preparing this, I thought of the response of the apostles to Jesus uh, whenever he tells them or gives the bread of life discourse. Right? The saying is hard. The saying is hard. It's hard to stand up for the truth at times. It's hard to have a conversation with someone that you love, someone that you're close to, and to tell them what they're doing is not right and that you don't approve of it. That's hard. It's hard to have someone that you love be mad at you, to talk about you, maybe to just talk about you and not talk to you, right? To push you out of their life because you confronted them about something they were doing that was not good. It's hard, but it's possible. My God calls us to this, and so he's always going to give us the grace that we need to live it out. To be bold in those circumstances whenever we need to tell the truth to someone. And that grace comes to us through our life lived in the sacraments, particularly through the sacrament of the Eucharist. St. Thomas Aquinas calls the Eucharist the sacrament of charity. And so in order to have the strength to live that life that we're called to live on our, uh, in and of ourselves, and to have the strength to call others to live that life, to proclaim the truth, we have to be united to God in the Eucharist, right? in that sacrament of charity. We have to receive Christ who is our strength. We have to receive Him frequently, right? to allow God who is love to penetrate our hearts, to convict us of the truth. We have to receive Him frequently to allow God, who is absolute truth, to preserve us from the errors of the world. Right? We hear so many crazy things throughout the day, on the news, on the radio, at school, at the workplace, wherever. And so we need to stay close to God to keep us from falling to those errors. That title, the Sacrament of Charity, is a fitting one. Right? Jesus tells the apostles before he's handed over, no, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And so at times, we're going to have to lay down our lives for our friends, right? for those that we love. We're going to have to lay down our life by imitating Jesus, by standing up for the truth, which may lead to our being ridiculed, our being mocked, our being discarded in a sense, but we're called to stand up for the truth. This is what love is, right? Willing the good of the other, leading them to the truth. And this is what we're called to, and it's what we receive the strength to do every time we come to Mass and we receive the Eucharist. Every time we receive the Eucharist, we're strengthened by that sacrament of charity, to then go out and live that life of charity, that life of love, that life of truth. What is truth? Pope Benedict says that truth is the light that gives meaning and value to charity. The light that gives meaning and value to charity. If we don't have truth, then our good deeds are social. But with the truth, It becomes charity, right? Truth gives light and meaning to charity and value. Jesus' answer to the Pharisee is about truth. It's about love. Love of God and love of neighbor has to be grounded in that truth. And if it's not, it's going to leave us unfulfilled, right? We see that. Look at the world. People want to know the truth, they're yearning to know the truth, but they don't get it and so they continue to search and they're unhappy, they're unfulfilled, they wonder about. We who have that truth, who've been given it in a special way through the church, have to share it with others, 
Right? We don't beat people over the head with it. We don't point at them and say they're sinners and terrible people and they're going to go to hell and they need to follow what we're doing. But out of love, we have a responsibility to share it with them. Right? Charitably, lovingly. Maybe not all at once. Right? Hand them the catechism and say, if you don't live by this, you're done. No. But gradually, bringing them along. Helping them to know the truth. Jesus tells us, right, the truth will set us free. There's an end to that sort of wandering about, that restless searching, when we know the truth. We have to challenge people to live by it. And only when we do this, only when we ourselves live by it, only when we challenge others to do so, will we be living out that commandment that Jesus gives us today, to love God and to love our neighbor.